program. As northeastern New South Wales battens down the hatches, southeast Queensland is counting the cost after its worst flooding since 1974, when almost the entire city of Brisbane was underwater. Areas from the Sunshine Coast through Brisbane to the Gold Coast have been affected with homes flooded, roads cut and people rescued from floodwaters. One man was killed by flying debris as he sat in his office. There is an upside. The crippling drought that has gripped the state's southeast corner is now well and truly broken and a crisis that saw the commissioning of a multi-billion dollar water grid to safeguard urban drinking supplies is now over. But it's little comfort for those now mopping up. John Taylor reports from Brisbane. The bloke's lucky to get out of it. There's a fair bit of water coming down here early this morning and, and she's uh, floated away on him. Oh, I thought, um, when's it going to stop? Uh, yeah. It, um, it's never been, never been like this. After years of drought and draconian water restrictions, southeast Queensland is now awash. In a torrential downpour, about a third of the region's yearly rainfall fell in just one day, causing the worst flash flooding in Brisbane since 1974. Gotten pretty high in here, about 1.2, something like that. Our fridge was over there. This morning, Mel James was waiting for the insurance assessor to come. Just about everything in her rented home was underwater. Just devastated because this is our home, so everything's gone. What are you doing? Spent a few days cleaning. <laughs> room after room is the same. She's a social worker who is used to dealing with difficult situations, but this is different. It's a bit harder when it hits home. It's a bit personal, so. In the space of a few hours, floodwaters surged through surrounding streets in the inner northern Brisbane suburb of Windsor. With the rain gone, those that could were cleaning. A change picking the grass off the street side. So... We're pretty close to the uh, community here. We socialise together quite a bit, so we've all pulled together and helped each other out. The water from a nearby creek rose so fast it flooded a car park used by staff from two of Brisbane's major hospitals. Tried to drive the car, but um, it just stalled and the water just kept rising. We actually got marooned in the netball courts over here and um, got floated out on a rubber ducky a bit later on by the um, fireys who did a great job. I just got a call from my dad before saying, hey, if you find your car, call me, eh? <laughs> Cars were tossed about like bath toys. They look fine from the outside, but the extent of the water damage means most are probably write-offs destined for wreckers. Heart goes out to a lot of these people. I mean, the car's their pride and joy. And, you know, buy a new car, here one day, gone the next. It's just one of them things. Across the southeast, emergency services have received thousands of calls for help and have rescued many motorists who were trapped by flooded roads. In places, there were roaring winds. Huge seas pounded the beaches. Trees and power lines were brought down. Roads cut and there were even some landslides. I heard a big roar, um, which I thought was a plane, and it sounded like it was in trouble, actually, and very low, which was why I just, I just ran out and could see all the mud sliding and the boulders, trees, just all being washed down the hill and down the road, yeah, and into the neighbour's back garden. A Gold Coast real estate agent was killed when flying debris smashed through his office window as he talked on the phone. It was very freaky. Um, it happened um, out of the blue. Um, we were looking outside our windows one moment and weren't looking the next, and then all of a sudden the, the shatter of glass, like a, a bomb going off. And, uh, yeah, that's when it all happened. The accident that claimed his life is a reminder to all of us not only of the fragility of life but the terrible power of nature uh, when it turns on an event like we saw yesterday. The heavy rains are now moving out of Queensland. In northern New South Wales, authorities are warning people to brace themselves for floods. Those people in flood prone areas need to be making all the preparations right now for potential, if they, if they have had to move in the past, they need to make those preparations now. I'm not saying they have to move now, if they, if, if they wish to, that's a good option. 
For many in Brisbane, the flooding has brought back memories of 1974, when the city was nearly submerged. Those who lived through it will never forget it. But this time around, the flooding has brought some benefits. The worst drought in South East Queensland's history is over. For years, the region has been in the grip of drought and tough restrictions have had to be imposed because it was feared that Brisbane could simply run out of water. Billions have been spent on building a water pipeline network to move water to drought affected areas. But it's all changed. Today, two of Brisbane's dams were overflowing. The Queensland Premier, Anna Bly, took to the air to see for herself. Regardless, the government will press on with construction. Since Monday, our dams have received more than one year's supply of water. That's 240,000 megalitres in the last three days, Mr Speaker. Brisbane's Lord Mayor Campbell Newman was out today inspecting the damage. He says the clean-up will take time and with more rain expected, it's been a timely wake-up call for Brisbane. It just demonstrates that this is a flood-prone city. It is uh, built on a floodplain um, and we're now seeing again and, uh, the sort of events that can occur uh, after three, four years of sustained drought. We're now seeing the sort of things that can happen in this city. As Mel James sorts through her sodden belongings, she remains optimistic and says things could have been much worse. There were people out here you know, at, at risk of losing their lives last night and you know, that's, I worry for them more than for us. We'll have to clean up and get new stuff, but we're pretty lucky that, yeah, we got out okay. John Taylor reporting from Brisbane.